Hi, I'm Kathy Peck, independent demonstrator in Wichita Falls, Texas. I am sh sharing this card I made today. Uh, I made this actually back in December for a swap. So I made hmm, about a dozen of them. And this is made with the Corner Bouquet stamp set. And I will tell you, this idea came from Jane Allmark. This is the large stamp, but this is the small, smaller corner stamp. And she put it on its side or, you know, end. And I thought that was a really cool idea. So I'll show you how I created this focal point. And I used the Oso Ombre Designer Series paper, which is a, um, it's a celebration item such as the corner bouquet and celebration ends on Sunday, February 28th. So there's not a lot of time left to pick up these cool products, but I used the Osa Ombre for my color palette. So this is Rococo Rose, Granny Apple Green and Bermuda Bay. So for my card base, I used Blushing Bride and then the Rich Razzleberry. So let me show you how I made this little focal point. You see, here's one of my swaps that came that came back to me because they didn't need it. But yeah, I love swapping cards. I'm, I do several card swaps every year. So for this particular centerpiece, you need a three by three piece of white, basic white, and then you'll need a mask. And for my mask, I take a piece of four by four um, post-it note paper. And then I folded it in half and folded it in half again. And then I used my punch, my two and a quarter inch punch. When I folded it in half, I lined up this fold mark and these two edges with these marks inside the the punch, you can see it has like little indentation marks. And I would just line that up until I got the edges to the center and poof, punch, and it came out perfect. So I had two pieces here, so I was gonna show you exactly how I did it, but I missed, oh, there it is. Come here, I can show you real quickly. So yes, you just fold this in half. Oops, I don't wanna get my head in the way. and fold it in half again. This makes a nice mask, or you can use, you know, masking paper that you can get on Amazon or in your local craft store. Although I prefer this method because I find sometimes with the masking paper that sticks to the whole sheet, if you're not careful when you remove it, you can actually pull up your, your paper that you stamped on and separate it. So there we go. And I've also marked it up here. So I'll line all that up, line the center fold line with the mark at the top. And then I'm going to punch, I don't know if you can see those where I marked it with a blend. And there you have it, your circle. I also like to make good use of my grid paper when I'm stamping like this. Because the grid paper, I love stamping up grid paper. It makes it easy to just keep everything lined up. So what I did is I marked out, I found the center and I marked out a three by three space, which is what my white paper is. And what I'm gonna do is take the stamping seal and just put a little dab in there. This is just what I like to do and then I'm gonna touch it with my finger so it's not so sticky, but it's still going to have enough stick to hold this paper in place. And I put the white in there. Excuse me for being sniffly this morning. And then I'm going to take my post-it note and just line it up with the marks that I made and stick it on here. Now, sometimes I'll use a piece of tape to hold this in, but what I'll do is just take a little bit more of this just stick it down there that's my quick mask 
All right, so I used three colors on this circle here. I used the green apple green, Rococo rose, and Bermuda Bay. Not three colors you'd think you'd put together, but it worked. <laughs> so, and they use our Stampin' Blends. Now I've been using uh, blender brushes for a long time, not Stampin' Blends, blender brushes for a long time. So I have a set that I got on Amazon and they work nicely, but I find that I, the Stampin' Up set is the same size, similar size, but I find that the brush is more compact. And I like that, I like that a lot. But this is fine, they all wash up real good. Even though it holds color, the color does not transfer once it's dry. And this is one that I've used that's washed up perfectly. So, and I do like this size. This is a good size. I mean, you can get brushes like huge like this and teeny tiny like that. But I find this size is really perfect for all applications. This, these are, this is really too small. Okay, so let me show you what I did. You need one brush for each color because you, you don't want to mix up the colors. So I'm going to start with the Granny Apple Green. And you really need to just swirl it on here and get the color to get the color on. And you don't, this goes pretty quickly. You know, the intensity is up to you. Now this is going to make my camera rock. So I'm using a card table, so I apologize for that. Like I said, how deep you want the color is up to you. Okay, and I'm going to put the Bermuda Bay on, and then I'll do the Rococo Rose last in the middle. Because this does get everywhere, if you're not careful. Now, Bermuda Bay is pretty intense, and it goes on really quickly. Coca Rose here. Let me grab another one. And this one's going to swoosh right in the middle. There. I want to. This, this one I made really, really dark. And then if you look at this other one, it was a little bit lighter. Let's see, I think I like the lighter colors better. This was my prototype. When I'm doing a swap, I always make one card first to kind of see how I like it. I do want a bit more green here, green apple green. And then I'll go ahead and once it comes together, Write down all the measurements and then mass cut it up and mass produce it. So this was pretty easy once I got it done. All right, now I'm going to pull this up. Here's my circle. And then we're going to stamp these, the floral image. Oh, well, here was my, I used a sticky mask on the first first set I did with the, I think it was from Inka Dinka Doo, and that was okay until I started, when I take it off, it would pull up the edges of the paper. So like, like I said, if you're going to use that kind of mask, you have to be really careful. Okay, so here we go. Here's this one. I'm going to actually stick it on here the way it should go. It's actually, you don't have to be particular how you put this. I probably should use a Stamparatus. I think I did use my Stamparatus when I stamped this because I had some issues with keeping it solid black, but we'll use this today. All right, and I like the colors at the angle, and I want to put this here, so I'm going to pop that on there. Hold it for a few seconds to let the color transfer. Give it a good squish. Oh, that came out really nicely. 
And then I took the little teeny flower out of here, pop it on a block, and just stamped a few extras. Get these out of the way. There we go. That's it. That's all that took to create my little centerpiece for this particular card. So, and there's no sentiment on the front. Um, sentiment can go inside. I think I used, um, I didn't put any, but you could put one in here. An option would be the Many Mates has lots of sentiments in there. That's, that's one that I like to go to. Here it is, the Many Mates. Get my light out of the way. I have an extra light up here that puts a glare on everything. But yeah, that's a good one. So anyway, Corner Bouquet and the Oso oh Ombre DSP are two celebration products that I use to make this particular card. Whoops. And celebration ends on the 28th. So you only have a few more days to get these particular products. These are um, available for free with a $50 purchase. So if you spend 50, you could choose Corner Bouquet or you could choose Oso oh Ombre. If you spend 100, then you can get them both. And I do enjoy both products. So there you go. Thanks and have a great day.